welcome to a new Encontro de Descobrimentos Online. Today, I'm going to be talking with the Ambassador of Finland to Portugal, Mrs. Oti Olofainen, who took over as the Ambassador of Finland to Portugal on September 2013. Prior to her visit to Lisbon, Ambassador played functions as the Director General of the Defense Policy Department and Crisis Management for Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Previously, she worked as Director General of the Department of Arms Control, as well as other functions in the political affairs and administrative affairs departments of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland. Mrs. Ambassador, I appreciate your presence in this interview. Thank you very much for joining us. Muito, muito obrigada. <laughs> obrigada. Finland is a worldwide reference concerning education. What is so different about Finland's system of education in order to succeed? First of all, I must say that, of course, we are very happy about this situation that we are so famous for our education system. But um, I would name maybe two key issues why the, the situation is as it is. And one is the quality of teachers. We think that this is one of the key issues, of course. And in Finland also, the, the teachers have a very high education They are very competent. They have to have master's degrees. And um, also, when somebody wants to become a teacher, she or he has to compete for, uh, for a place at the university. So the students that are, want to become teachers are selected among a big group of people. They have to have the academic skills, but they also have to have like the psychological uh, competencies that are suitable for the profession. And so far it has been so that also the profession of teachers is very attractive. So there definitely are, uh, there is a big uh, range of people who want to become teachers and then those that are most qualified will are then selected to the university. So that is also a way to guarantee that there are skillful and also motivated people to become teachers. And also along the line, when the teachers all already are in their profession, they are educated more. They have additional education so that they they keep up there with their uh, profession professional skills during the whole career. And then another feature in the Finnish education system is the inclusiveness or the equality, which is also more present in the in the Finnish society as such and uh, the basic education from uh, grade one to grade nine is compulsory but it's also free to everybody it's free of charge so all girls and boys regardless of their social economic background or other other background go through the same system and uh, everything starting from books and pens and pencils is free. So everybody also has the chance to, to uh, participate in the same teaching. And, um, and then if somebody has major problems, there are some mechanisms for individual support, some extra teachers, some uh, services of psychologists and so on. So as a small country, we cannot afford to lose any brains. So this is also a system where we try to make uh, make it possible that all possible uh, competencies that we have in the society are, are then used. Of course, in reality, we also face several problems. And of course, economic problems are one of the major ones. So... This is a very expensive system uh, to maintain, but it's also in Finland, I think there is a common consensus that this is something that we just have to uh, pay enough attention to since we have created such a good thing. We just have to make sure that we can also finance it in the future. And uh, also, according to the World Economic Forum, Finland is the most safe and secure country in the world. What would you point as the special factor that gives Finland that title? To this question, it is very difficult to give any very simple answers. But I think this is also 
uh, linked to some other features in the Finnish society. In, in the global context and also with com in comparison with other European states, I think we can say that Finland, is, ha Finland has a very high degree of equality. We have a very high degree of transparency in our administration and government. We have, um, we have a strong uh, economic and political stability. We have very trust work for trustworthy administration and civil servants. And I think this, when we put together all of this, we kind of have the, the, the basic we basic characteristics of the Finnish society. And it is also uh, quite um, important to note that Finnish people have a lot of trust in their own uh, administration and official institutions. So I think this is also linked to the, the security that we have in our country. And one special thing that we are proud of and our own administration and civil servants are proud of is the very close cooperation between different authorities. So if we talk that, for example, police and, and, uh, and some other authorities can work in a very uh, pragmatic way together, I think this also helps to prevent crime and also to make sure that people are doing well in our society. Of course, Finland, even if we would like to see a paradise, it is not like that. And we are, of course, facing many problems. And we also have to face, as uh, just like all other European states, also many new challenges and threats, just like, for example, cyber threats, which is a very big issue also in Finland. Finland is slowly coming out of an economic recession. Is Finland betting on internationalization? Unfortunately, really, the economic situation in Finland is not good. And we are trying to find our way forward. International, internationalization, internationalization is, of course, the way forward. And uh, exports, um, international investments in Finland is something that we are counting on. But this is nothing new in Finland. We have been during the past decades already very dependent on exports and the export markets. And that is why also the economic, the European economic crisis hit us so, so badly because we are so dependent on the economy, economies of other European states, but, but of course also more globally of the economic situation in the world. And... Um, here again, I think we basically trust in our own know-how, our own technological skills, our own high level of education. And this is where we try to find more, more business also. And uh, the government that is now starting is putting a lot of effort in trying to make the business environment in Finland more uh, easier and more uh, so that it would also work better for the small and medium sized enterprises. So we definitely count on more exports in the future. Our problem has been the competitiveness. It has been very difficult for us as for other small Euro European states as well to compete with some other countries in the very global market. Talking now specifically about the relationship between Portugal and Finland, are many Finnish companies uh, coming and investing to Portugal or uh, in the other way around right now? There are contacts, but of course, as an ambassador and as a Finn, I would like to see also more. I could say that during the economic crisis in Portugal, some of the Finnish companies lost to some extent their interest, but I'm sure there will be more in the future to find. And uh, there are also very good examples of uh, uh, investments, both sides. For example, Nokia Networks has a big uh, uh, center here in Portugal, employing 
2,000 people and, and so on. So there are good examples and I think in the future it's possible to find more. I think we bo in both countries we share a deep uh, commitment and interest, for example, in the fields of, of uh, a clean tech or digi digitalization and so on. And since we are now also trying to look for new markets for the small and medium-sized enterprises, I think there is definitely much more to explore. As I said before, recently the government of Finland has changed. What can the world expect from Finland in the next years? I only make difficult questions, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a very good question. It's a very good question. But maybe I would first underline that in Finland we always have coalition governments. And that means that it there's always uh there are always political compromises that are made. So the the differences between different governments are so not so dramatic. And also this time there are three uh parties in the government, it's a center-right government, but uh, two of these parties are parties that have been many times in the government and we already know quite well what their political agendas are. Now this time there is one new government party, it is the Finns party that has never before been in the government and in that sense there might be some new tones also, also in the government's work. But we have already seen the government program and we can still say that this is the same Finland as it used to be. The same values, the same, the same basic principles in the society. In that sense, nothing will change dramatically. I think now in the near fu future, the basic focus of the new government will be in the economic affairs. Because the situation is not good, we want to make it fast, very much better. We need to make some very severe, very profound uh, structural changes. And I think the government, new government is already showing strong commitment to do the necessary decisions, even if they might be very difficult ones. So that will be then the, the, uh, the background or the basis on which we can build Finland further. In, in the EU policy, I also think that there will be maybe some new nuances, but basically Finland will continue as a constructive EU partner to everybody. And it is stated in the government program that um, Finland uh, will, uh, will, uh, will work with, with other EU partners with, in a constructive way. It will um, try to combine the national interests with the common European interests. And I think this is the attitude and the point of departure in, in all other European, other, other European capitals as well. So nothing very dramatic. Also, of course, I think in Finland now people would like to see a more effective EU and in that sense, some, some modifications in EU could also be needed. But still, we are very much counting on being a constructive member in the EU. In more generally, in international affairs, I'm sure Finland will continue its role as a, as a country that wants to contribute to international peace and stability and also bear its share of international responsibilities. Now, so we can uh, end this interview. Through your life and your career as a diplomat, you must have lived some interesting situations. Is there any episode you would like to share with us? Well, it's it's been a long career already, so there have been many very rewarding more moments and and uh, phases in my career i think it's the best part of being a diplomat is to see and get to know people from different cultures and different backgrounds and in that sense it's a 
process of lifelong learning and you can always see something new but also learn something new like at the moment i'm trying to learn the portuguese language which makes uh, which really is a, it's a great uh, challenge but also i like it very much but then on the other hand when as diplomats we also work very close to our own administration to our own government and in that sense it has been very interesting also when there are the times that we see very closely how our own policies are taking shape and how also we as diplomats can help the government to shape our foreign policy. But um, my own career, I would say that I there have been also very busy times trying to match this very full career and full work with being a mother of five children and uh, this constant balancing between family life and professional life. But above all, all at this moment, I would like to mention this, my present work in Portugal. I have been posted in, in different countries, but this is the first time that I am posted as an ambassador. And as an ambassador, more than as an, as a, uh, in other positions, you feel very concretely that you are a bridge between the two countries. And I, I will say that I really am I'm honored to have this position as this bridge between Finland and Portugal. And I'm also sure that because just also because Portugal is my first country where I'm serving as an ambassador. So Portugal will have a very special place in my heart in the future also. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ambassador. And now that you're learning Portuguese, I may say it in, in Portuguese also. It was a pleasure to interview her. Thank you very much. And the votes of a good work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Until the next time.